this is how I did the foam. First lay out the track in the way that you want it, then position the foam underneath in the correct place and then draw around it. As you can see I've moved this one to the side and there's a pencil line along here. So you can just about see there. I'll put this one back. You can now see it lines up to the pencil mark. On both sides. Once you have the pencil mark, you can then put PVA underneath along the line. Go along here. And then you use pins to hold it down. You can use these foam nails, also from Woodland Scenics, to hold down the foam while it glue dries. These are basically T-shaped um, pins which you can put through the foam and into the baseboard. When the glue is dry, you can see they're quite solid, they don't move. But to make them even more uh, secure, move around here, you can then put plaster cloth over the foam as you can see here. This piece is still drying. This holds it down even more, makes it more secure, makes it very, very hard. What I've done here is added some bubble wrap rolled up and held down with masking tape to create a sort of a bank going across here. I've used a large amount of bubble wrap as it goes round to make a bigger embankment. If I come down to this angle, you should now be able to see the sort of effect. The masking tape is only there just to sort of hold it down temporarily. The plaster cloth will hold it in properly when it's when it's dry. As I go around the bank, of course, gets steeper. To use the plaster cloth, you basically cut out a section like this. It comes on a, on a long roll. This has been quite heavily used already, that's why it's a small roll. But it's basically just a, a roll. Cut a piece off, make sure it roughly fits the, uh, the area to be covered. You then dip it into, the, uh, into some water. I'm using an old um, uh, sweet box thing here. That's got some water in it. Plant it in there, then lay it over the top, and then you smooth it with your fingers. If you need more water, once it's on there, just use something like a paintbrush and dip that in and then take it over the top. The plaster cloth that I use is this stuff here, C1203. It's made by Woodland Scenics. It comes in a large roll, which is, uh, there's the measurements right there, 4.57 metres long, or 5 yards, I think. There are cheap alternatives available if you want to use those. I use this just because it is available and it goes well with the uh, the foam.
when you unroll it, it comes like this. There are two sides to it. There's the side that's um, on the top of the roll, like that, when it's all not like that. I don't know if you can see this on the uh, on the camera here. The plaster is thicker on one side. See the, the lumps there, like on the on the top, versus the other side. So it's a lot, a lot thinner. The thicker side, or the side with the most plaster, is what you want on the top. That way when you're spreading out and smoothing the plaster after you've put it down, you'll get more plaster and you can smooth it around easier. If you have it upside down, it will still work, but it's a little bit harder to use. I can't show you live on camera due to not having a tripod for the camera. So I'll put this down, I'll put the plaster on and then I'll carry on. I've now placed the plaster cloth over the area. I added an extra piece of bubble wrap along here just to make it more of a, a slope on the inside. But once it's in place and still, still wet and just smooth over the plaster. When you get to a join like this, try to keep it as thin as you can and just sort of gently overlap it but spread the plaster thinner so that it doesn't make too much of a lump. Also make sure you go, so the join is here, so make sure you go this way, like this in my case, because if I do it this way it will actually pull it up. If I do it this way and then it will stick down. Be fairly gentle on this bit because of the bubble wrap is only held in with masking tape, which of course with every moment is getting a bit more soggy from the from the water and the plaster. Depending on what you're doing um, in this area here, you can actually shape this to be something um, a little more uh, rough, for example, if you're trying to do like a rock face or something, you can make that considerably uh, sharper. One thing that I've discovered from doing this a few times is that if you see here with the plastic, this tends to make a much more smoother um, layout, which is fine for sort of grass or uh, a, a mud embankment, for example. Whereas if you want to use, um, if you use paper screwed up, particularly thicker brown packing paper, that makes a much more um, sharper and rougher kind of appearance. And that is very good for making like a rock face. Just continuing to uh, smooth out plaster cloth here.
if there are some gaps like you can see around here this doesn't matter too much because you can fill these in later either with a second layer or just cover over it with some more plaster later it's a bit slightly to dry out so I need a bit more water It's a bit short, so it's not, it's not quite making the, uh, the baseboard. Again, I'm not too worried about this piece here, because I can put another piece over it later, and it's still going to set anyway in that shape. So it's not too bad there. over here you can now start to see the profile coming out. Okay, I've now done some more of the plastering. I'm using a foam nail there just to hold that piece down. One thing to note with this is when you're going over the foam to lay track onto it, you need to make sure that this area along here remains as smooth as possible. If you don't, then you can the bumps will come through to the track level and potentially give you some track problems later. Once it's dry, you can sand down the plaster on top to make it smoother. Here I have the incline riser stopping around here. And as you can see there's a point here. I've stopped the riser here so this should be level and the plaster cloth continues to about here. That's about three inches from here to here. The idea is just to try and make this as smooth a slope as possible the start of the incline. The idea that even this bit here finishes pretty much before the point just goes past it slightly but the mechanism of the point of course is right down here yet. The idea here is I'm trying to make this as smooth and as flat as possible for the time it gets to the point. As you can see here, there's a small mistake in terms of the cloth that's gone onto the track foam and onto the sleepers. 
that can be cut off later with a knife. It's best to do any cutting like this when it's dry, because if you try and do it when it's wet it will just pull it off and make a mess.